guys, Chuck with Birch's Lawn Care, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Yellow Hornet, and I screwed up. I did a whole video where I unboxed it and showed what it came with, which isn't a whole lot of stuff, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal, and something happened, and I lost the video. So we're starting all over. I, as you can see in the background, I already have it set up a little bit, but I can still show you what came in the box and then we'll grind some more blades. So let's check it out. All right guys, there's a quick look at the Yellow Hornet. All set up and ready to rock and roll. These are some blades, or at least a blade that I had done previously. Um, things that comes with in the box. It'll come with a metal blade balancer. However, guys, I like the little plastic one. I think it's more, uh, it, it moves easier, so I think I get a better reading on if you're going to use a cheap balancer like these. This one seems like it's a little hard to move, so I don't know. I still like the, the plastic one, but it really depends on the diameter of the hole you're using. I mean, you can see that one. That was off the Time Master. They're, I mean, they're not a big difference in size as far as the hole, I guess. But the blade thickness is definitely in the weight, so maybe that'll play more of a, uh, that will play, I don't know, a bigger part in uh, how these react on these different balancers. Uh, you also get a set of instructions. One thing to watch out on the instructions, and if, if this will zoom, this camera zooms really slow. Um... One thing you want, and sorry, I'm looking at this through the camera. So, here's a big thing to watch out for. And the first time I put this together, I did do it wrong. You want a, a quarter inch gap at the rear. And then, where does it say? The, oh, a quarter inch difference between the front and the rear of the, the angle of the grinding disc. And then you also want, where is it at? So hard looking at this through the viewer. Then you also want to have your grinder a half inch to three quarters of, of an inch above the rest. Okay guys, this right here is the rest. And, oh, if I can. So we're about a half inch, three quarters of an inch above the bottom of the rest there. And then you can tell, you see all that's, we're at that angle. So you got to have a quarter inch difference between this end and this end. And the reason is, and the first time I put this together, I was like, what the heck am I doing wrong? Because I'm one of those people that don't read directions. And I kept trying to grind my blade straight across, and it, there wasn't anything catching. I'm like, I'm trying to put spacers in, trying to bring this thing closer. Well, you hold it in, and you can see I'm holding it flat to the, uh, to the brace there. And you can see I'm moving the grinding paddle. So that's the reason, you see, if I was on this end, I, I would have to hold it off. And if you have to hold it off of the, if you have to, you have to be able to touch this right here. If you're not putting the weight of the blade on this support, then what's the point? You might as well just stick with your bench grinder, right? And the bench grinder is where I've been having problems. Even though I've been using it for a couple of years, I always end up with a little bit of a ridge. If you guys can see that ridge right there. On this blade and that's because I come at it from two different angles on my grinder and we'll show you on the grinder that there's a ridge on the grinder as well and that's because I'm coming like this with the blade and then I come like this with the blade and I'm not doing consistent angles and I can make my blade sharp I mean these right here are, are rusted but they're still sharp or have it an edge not a big edge on them but these right here have been through and I'm trying to get those angles knocked off of these totally and these are the blades for the Gravely the 36 inch those are uh, Time Master blades and you can adjust this angle for thinner and thicker blades obviously this blades a lot thicker than these guys I mean these guys are pretty pretty thin little blades and all we do to adjust this is a flathead screwdriver or a nut driver if you want. 
but it's just that it's just this washer clamp you put in your your angle grinder you just clamp this in I mean really that is it now one thing to watch out for and I went and purchased another angle grinder just for the yellow hornet and you can see this one has a switch on the side and that's why I had to go buy this one because the angle grinder I have has a paddle switch on the bottom so if this one which I like this angle grinder but if this one were to be sitting in here this one's a lot bigger I mean it's still a four and a half inch grinder but it's anyway if this one was sitting in in the clamp the hose clamp would have to run underneath the paddle which means I wouldn't be able to lock the paddle on which kind of defeats the purpose of being able to sharp your blade right so you want to make sure you got an angle grinder it's got a side switch or a switch that's going to be able to work with this kind of issue right here and another thing I did was I took my grinder my guard off because with the guard on the guard comes out as you can see on this angle grinder the guard comes out quite a bit from the uh, from the blade or the pad whatever you want to call it um, so I wasn't being able I was having to force the blade under here the mower blade to play with this to get around the guard so I just took the guard off and that's taking care of that problem hey guys so what I have on here is one of these guys right here it's a 60 grit uh, flap disc and this will uh, it's you know 60 grit so it's pretty rough you can use anything you want it does recommend that you use either a 50 or a 60 grit paddle or flat bit or disc I don't know why I keep saying bit but anyway guys that's really it it's really simple to set up like I said it's just this one hose clamp it goes through here your hose clamp on your angle grinder you want to be a half inch to three quarter of an inch above the bottom of your rest and you want to make sure you got a quarter inch difference this being a quarter inch closer than this the the back to the front and that's where I like I said that's where I goofed up when I was putting it in I kept forcing it and this as you tighten this up it will actually turn your angle grinder you'll feel it turn so it and I fought it and made it straight and then I went back and looked at the directions and realized I needed to fix it to fix it but anyway guys, real easy setup. I, I don't think there's really a reason to take that apart and set that back up since it's just a hose clamp. Um, so let's grind some blades. Let's make some noise. Check that out. That's the, I guess this would be the before because I haven't ran this across this grinder yet at all. These uh, make some pretty and they are pretty sharp. I mean, they're not, I don't like razor blade sharp on mower blades. Uh, make them razor blade that does tend to 
dull them out faster. Oh, excuse me, I've got the hiccups. Um, I like the, I don't know why I like the little plastic balancer so much better, but I do. Then this is the Toro, the uh, Time Master Blades. I just did this one. However, the before was where I ran it off the grinder. I was using this grinder with it with a straight angle, so it was really just freehand still. Um, I like this so much better. And you can see this ridge line. I'm going to run this one across now and see if I can't get that ridge knocked out and make these blades better. But I like being able to put this against this rest. That way I know I'm dragging it across this paddle exactly the same every time and it get, gets a good feeling for it. Uh, I think I'm going to really enjoy this Yellow Hornet uh, blade sharpener. But I'm going to see if I can knock the ridge off this Gravely uh, blade now. down the middle from that blade from the uh, bench grinder flip it around and yeah I, I usually write on my blades when I throw them in the bucket which mower they came off of but look at that I guess it kind of looks like with the light there might be a little ridge right there I can't tell if it's definitely doesn't feel like one it feels nice and smooth over here I can definitely feel that ridge even with my finger Don't cut a toe off. But here, it, it feels nice and smooth. It's got a good edge on it. I think this guy is going to be pretty cool. What I'm curious about, because I'm using that 60 grit flap disc, I'm wanting to put on, say, like a 40 grit uh, blade or grinder just to see how it'll do with that. I mean a grinding wheel is what I use down on the bench grinder so I I want to try that's a 24 grit. I'm just looking at what grinding wheels I have because and this is a no idea but no idea because I've used it so much. Anyway I'm going to put on a different grit even if it's this 24 grit uh, I'm going to look and see if I can find like a a 60 grit or something. Um, I've got some cutoff wheels, but those aren't really. Looks like maybe 24 grit is all I have for grinding. Um, anyway, I'm going to find a grinding wheel and just to try it as opposed to using the flap disc.
surface. That was from the flap, which it got that ridge taken down pretty well. This was just using a 24 grit wheel. Look at that. The ridge is totally gone. You can see a couple nicks in there I need to grind out. But like I said, these are blades that came out of my bucket. But that ridge is no more. That's why it took me so many stripes or swipes. Granted, I'm, one, it's a 24 grit. And two, you know, that was a pretty good ridge in that blade. But it pulled that ridge all the way out and it put a pretty good edge on there. But uh, I think that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to hit all my blades. I'm going to run down and pick up a uh, uh, little bit beefier of a grit so I don't have to take so many swipes at it. But I think I'm going to grind, check all my blades for that ridge. I'm going to grind them all down. And then I'll put the flap on for some sharpening. But even with as many times as I've pulled these blades across today, it doesn't leave a whole lot of mess. I'm going to make a little, I'll cut out a little tin cup down there for filings, but it doesn't leave a whole lot of filing. So, not too bad. I like it. I think it's going to uh, definitely give me a better quality cut for my customers and a uh, more consistent cut. And it's going to help me um, make my blades last longer once I get all these ridges grinded out. And, uh, yeah. So, I like it. And we'll see. I'll be using it this season. And at the end of the season, or midway through the season, after I've really had a chance to put it through some wet grass and dry grass and high grass. And, and we'll see how well it does on the blades. And again, guys, that's the Yellow Hornet blade sharpener I'll have a link down in the description if you want to check it out on Amazon um, I did see that Amazon and if you buy it direct from them was the same price so you can check it out you can go to yellowhornetmanufacturing.com oh excuse me or uh, or like I said I'll leave a link to the um, to Amazon which is where I purchased it and uh, yeah, check it out if you're looking for a blade sharpener but don't have the money to spend on a real expensive uh, sharpener at this point, like myself. Uh, maybe this is a route you can take to uh, make your blades last longer and have a more consistent cut. Hey guys, so that's a look at the uh, Yellow Hornet blade sharpener. I appreciate everybody watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And check me out on Wednesdays as we do a shout out to uh, other guys in the lawn care community. And then Fridays, as always, is a uh, kind of a no fluff out in the field, in the shop, in the office, actual work to help you grow your lawn care business. Again, thanks for watching.